Hi everyone! So today we'll be responding to a video put out by self-described theocratic fascist Matt Walsh titled, Got Milk? You're a racist colonizer now, according to the left. If you're not familiar with Matt Walsh, he is arguably the most extreme among the Daily Wire clan. For a long time, vegans were a small minority hated by both the left and the right. Although this is still the case, the animal rights movement has grown to the point where we are starting to see the inevitable partisan divide forming. I say inevitable because despite some activists insisting that it's not, veganism is an inherently progressive left-wing position. So naturally, as our movement grows, support will grow on the left and opposition will grow stronger on the right. The Daily Wire's coverage on this topic illustrates this phenomenon. Now, as you're probably aware, milk has been a lightning rod for controversy over the last several years. It wasn't always like this. You know, back in my day, milk was a much simpler thing. When I was a kid, we drank milk by the gallon. Your mom would give you warm milk at night to help you sleep, even though I don't think there's any science behind that. Maybe there is. I don't know. Celebrities did advertisements for milk. Not any particular milk brand, but just like milk in general. It's like, it's like seeing an advertisement for bread, not for any brand, but just bread. But we didn't question it. We liked it. We liked our milk and it was fine. Then things got complicated. Uh, first, the marketplace became flooded with other substances called milk, even though they're not milk. We were lied to, betrayed, coconut milk, almond milk, soy milk, oat milk, on and on. There's no milk in any of it. These are not dairy products. It's a scam. He's really making our argument for us when he mentions celebrities shilling for the dairy industry and openly admits that we didn't question it. This is very on brand for Matt Walsh. Don't question it, just accept it. If you question it, you'll learn that Got Milk was a government-funded ad campaign. The dairy industry is propped up by government subsidies, meaning they do not simply produce milk to meet consumer demand. They produce the amount necessary to retain their subsidy. In response to declining milk consumption, instead of scaling back production, they launched an ad campaign to artificially create demand so they could sell the surplus and keep producing at current levels. This flies in the face of the free market, which right-wingers like Matt Walsh fervently advocate for. Despite government support, the dairy industry is struggling to compete with the plethora of plant-based milk options on the market. The market has spoken, Matt. Almond milk, oat milk, and soy milk are hot commodities, while cow's milk is on the way out. This narrative that plant-based milk isn't real milk is nonsense. First of all, most linguists take a descriptive approach rather than a prescriptive approach to language, meaning they describe how words are used rather than prescribe how they should be used. People prescribe meaning to words all the time, and this is how language evolves. When that meaning is acknowledged by others and its usage spreads, a once prescriptive definition becomes descriptive. For example, most current descriptive definitions of murder refer only to the killing of human beings. But animal rights advocates prescribe that the definition of murder should be inclusive of non-human animals, just as we prescribe that many non-human animals should be recognized as persons. It's easier to argue for inclusive prescriptivism than it is to argue for exclusive prescriptivism. Exclusive prescriptivists are often just making an appeal to definition, which is a logical fallacy. I would argue that while vegans are being prescriptive when we say that meat is murder, we are being descriptive when we say plant milk is real milk. Humans have used the word milk to refer to substances other than mammalian breast milk for literal centuries. The term coconut milk dates back to the 1600s. But I expect nothing less from the man who has made a career out of dictating that adult human female is the only valid definition of the word woman. Matt claims consumers are being lied to and betrayed by plant-based milk companies, but I don't see him up in arms about peanut butter or cocoa butter. It's almost as if Matt's crusade to protect the sanctity of words like milk and woman has nothing to do with a genuine care for linguistic accuracy. He is purely interested in advancing his theocratic fascist agenda. And because theocratic fascism has no logical basis, the only way to do this is by making fallacious arguments sound convincing. And the way to make bullshit sound convincing is confidence and repetition. In place of a concrete argument, propagandists like Matt confidently assert over and over again that trans women aren't real women and plant milk isn't real milk. I recently saw an advertisement for, this is a direct quote, 
Um, milked cashews. Milked cashews. They're claiming that they milked cashews. I don't even want to know what they're doing to those poor cashews what, that they call milking. All I know is that cashews do not have nipples or mammary glands. So you can't milk them, you pervert. Ah, oh, yes, those poor cashews. Matt's attempt at humor here is such a hard miss. Almonds don't have titties is what my little brother used to say to me before he wised up and went vegan. It's basically the vegan equivalent of I identify as an attack helicopter. Please get a new joke. Anyway, the irony is palpable when he calls cashew milk producers perverts. Blending some cashews with water? Perversion. Shoving a fist up a cow's anus and inserting a syringe full of semen into her vagina? Nothing to see here. Carry on. Then it got worse. There was an active effort to problematize milk, to make it seem like something scandalous and evil. It started, of course, with the vegans, who hate all that is good and beautiful in the world, including and especially dairy products. And then outlets like the New York Times started running headlines like this. Why white supremacists are chugging milk and why geneticists are alarmed. PETA put out a PSA claiming that milk is a white supremacist symbol. They point to a scene in Inglorious Bastards where a Nazi character drinks milk. That's one of their reasons why it's a white supremacist symbol. So now it's milk's fault if a guy who's pretending to be a Nazi drinks it. Those pesky vegans just hate all that is good and beautiful in the world like rape racks and gas chambers. Vegans aren't trying to make dairy seem scandalous and evil. It is scandalous and evil. On the contrary, the dairy industry pumps out propaganda to make it seem like it's not. Of course, Matt is attacking a straw man here. PETA was not arguing that milk is bad because Nazis drink it. They were making the point that cow's milk has become a symbol of white supremacy. The author cites several movie scenes where milk was used to symbolize racism. They also link to an article that showcases white supremacists like Richard Spencer putting milk emojis in their Twitter bios and using rates of lactose intolerance to demonstrate the supposed superiority of the white race. It would be fallacious to argue that milk is bad solely because it has become a symbol of something bad. Pepe the Frog has become a symbol of the alt-right. That doesn't mean frogs are bad. Apparently, the creator of Pepe the Frog has expressed his dismay at Pepe being used as a hate symbol and has sued organizations for doing so. Yes, PETA is using this as a way to create negative associations with dairy in people's minds. However, their argument for why dairy is bad is that, like white supremacy, it is cruel and exploitative. I mean, milk just can't catch a break. Which is why the headline uh, this week from the Daily Mail should come as no surprise, quote, now experts are asking whether milk is racist as part of a taxpayer-funded research project into connections between milk and colonialism. Now, you probably aren't wondering what kind of connections there could possibly be between colonialism and milk, but I'm going to read this to you anyway. Here's the Daily Mail. Quote, a taxpayer-funded project is set to research connections between milk and colonialism. It was revealed yesterday. Academics at an Oxford museum will research the political nature of milk and its colonial legacies. One of the experts involved has previously argued that milk is a Northern European obsession that has been imposed on other parts of the world. Dr. Johanna Zetterstrom Sharp said the assumption that milk was a key part of the human diet may be understood as a white supremacist one, as many populations outside uh, Europe and North America have high levels of lactose intolerance in adulthood. The new project, Milking It, Colonialism, Heritage, and Everyday Engagement with Dairy, has won funding from the Arts and Humanities Research Council. Well, they are certainly milking it, that's true. We have to concede that much, I suppose. The article, though, continues, the milk project will be based at the History of Science Museum in Oxford, which announced it had received funding. The museum said, by focusing on communities intersecting industry, uh, aid, and government regulation, the project aims to center on heritage as a vital framework for understanding how colonial legacies influence contemporary issues and affect people's lives. First of all, this exhibit sounds fucking sick. Thank you on behalf of the researchers for the free advertising. Anyway, the argument is crystal clear. Many populations outside Europe and North America, which are majority white, have high levels of lactose intolerance. Specifically, 65% of Hispanics, 75% of black people, and 95% of Asians are lactose intolerant, while less than 25% of white people are. 
The fact that the government pushes dairy on us when the majority of black, brown, and Asian Americans will experience abdominal pain, nausea, bloating, and or diarrhea from consuming it is a glaring example of institutionalized racism. The dairy industry successfully lobbying the government to recommend milk as an essential part of a balanced diet sends the message that white is normal and black, brown, and Asian are abnormal. This othering is the hallmark of white supremacy. Imagine growing up black or Asian in America and being told you're going to have weak bones if you don't drink a beverage that gives you diarrhea, or being called a soy boy by your classmates for drinking soy milk. You'd feel like an outsider, like something was wrong with you, like you have a deficiency. In reality, it is lactose tolerance that is abnormal. There's nothing wrong with being lactose intolerant. You're not a baby cow. And there are other sources of calcium. Now, of course, the idea that um, milk has a colonial legacy is, is almost certainly nonsense. But it doesn't matter because there's nothing wrong with colonialism. If dairy spread through the world by way of colonialism, that would just be one more reason among many to be grateful for colonialism. When responding to nonsense like this, we shouldn't make the mistake of implicitly affirming the left's use of colonial as a, as a pejorative. This is one of the great strategic mistakes that conservatives have, have made, and we make a lot of strategic mistakes. This is one of them, is that we're willing to defend something against the charge of being colonialist when we should be defending colonialism itself. We should be saying, oh, you, you, you think that's colonialist? Well, great. Thank you. Thank you for the compliment. European colonialism has been one of the greatest forces for good that the world has ever seen. Billions of people today are living better lives than they would have lived had Europeans not colonized the globe. The colonizers spread civilization. They spread the gospel. They spread innovation. They spread um, important ideas, such as the idea that you shouldn't murder your children to appease the sun god, that you shouldn't eat your enemies to absorb their life force. Did the colonizers also spread dairy products? I don't know, but I'm happy to add that to the list of triumphs. In case you needed more evidence that Matt is a theocratic fascist, here you go. Putting theocratic fascist in his Twitter bio is a prime example of, I'm joking, but not really. It may read as a joke, but if you actually listen to him speak on topics such as trans rights, abortion, racial justice, and homelessness, it will become very clear that the label fits. According to Wikipedia, fascism is a far-right, authoritarian, and ultranationalist political ideology characterized by a dictatorial leader, centralized autocracy, militarism, forcible suppression of opposition, belief in a natural social hierarchy, subordination of individual interests for the perceived good of the nation or race, and strong regimentation of society and the economy. Opposed to anarchism, democracy, pluralism, egalitarianism, liberalism, socialism, and Marxism, fascism is at the far right of the traditional left-right spectrum. Fascism rejects the view that violence is inherently negative or pointless, but rather views imperialism, political violence, and war as a means to national rejuvenation. Fascism's extreme authoritarianism and nationalism often manifest as a belief in racial purity or a master race, usually blended with some variant of racism or discrimination against a demonized other, such as Jews, homosexuals, ethnic minorities, or immigrants. Matt recently tweeted, now that the election is over, I think we can finally say that, yeah, actually Project 2025 is the agenda. He's not fucking joking. I've listened to enough of his content that I'm fairly confident in my ability to tell the difference between his obvious sarcasm, his sincerity disguised as sarcasm, and his dead serious sincerity. 
Matt describing himself as a theocratic fascist is sincerity disguised as sarcasm. His defense of colonialism, however, is dead seriously sincere. Now let's look at the definition of colonialism from a few different sources and see if there's a positive way to spin it. From Google, colonialism is the policy or practice of acquiring full or partial political control over another country, occupying it with settlers, and exploiting it economically. From Wikipedia, the pursuing, establishing, and maintaining of control and exploitation of people and of resources by a foreign group. From Merriam-Webster, domination of a people or area by a foreign state or nation. The practice of extending and maintaining a nation's political and economic control over another people or area. From Stanford Encyclopedia, a practice of domination which involves the subjugation of one people to another. Yeah, there is absolutely no way to positively portray colonialism, just as there is no way to positively portray slavery. Both involve exploitation, domination, and subjugation. You have to be a fucking psychopath to argue that colonialism is good, actually. But let's ignore Matt's psychopathy for a second and address his arrogance. He says with confidence the idea that milk has a colonial legacy is almost certainly nonsense. Why? How? He's not even trying to understand how people might come to this conclusion. He's simply swatting it aside because he's a reactionary jackass. It doesn't take much digging to verify that dairy spread across the globe via European colonization. Matt can't be bothered to fact check himself. Also, notice the way he frames indigenous people as irrational and barbaric, while white Christian settlers were innovative and righteous. Obviously, it's irrational and barbaric to engage in child sacrifice and cannibalism, but this is a gross mischaracterization of indigenous people. Of course there are examples of indigenous tribes doing heinous shit throughout history, but there are also examples of white Christian settlers doing heinous shit, such as the Salem witch trials. In the age of the internet, where we have so much information at our fingertips, Matt Walsh still believes in a sky daddy who impregnated a poor, unsuspecting 14-year-old girl with his son, who was also himself, to save humanity from eternal hellfire, but only if they worship him, and only him, and they must believe in him on faith alone, because he provides no evidence for his existence aside from a 2,000-year-old book. And there are thousands of other religious texts that are supposedly divinely inspired. But those are all false gods, unlike this one who is real, because mommy and daddy said so. Yet he has the audacity to snark on Native Americans for believing in a vengeful sun god. Okay. The main takeaway from stories like this is that academia ha has been an aggressively useless institution for a, a long time. Now, it wasn't always this way. There was a time when academics worked on important societal problems. They pondered the deepest and most important questions of life. It seems hard to believe now, but there used to be actual insight and wisdom and useful revelations coming out of academia. But those days are long in the past now. Today, academics sit around with their heads up their own in each other's asses, inhaling their own fumes, trying to conjure up new examples of oppression and racism. They say stuff like this, by focusing on communities intersecting industry, aid and government regulation, the project aims to center on heritage as a vital framework for understanding how colonial legacies influence contemporary issues and affect people's lives. I mean, that one sentence is academia in a nutshell. They find the most complicated way to say the dumbest things. They no longer ponder the deepest mysteries of life. Instead, they ponder why milk is racist and so many other things that are just as pointless, if not more. And that is why they, but not milk, are today canceled. While there's a lot of bullshit that comes out of academia, this crusade against college education that conservatives have embarked on is telling. You're telling on yourself when you claim that universities are indoctrination camps. There's a reason you don't want to send your kids to a place where they'll be exposed to leftist ideas. It's because you worked so hard to indoctrinate them into your conservative Christian cult, and you're afraid that they'll start to have doubts. However, if your beliefs were true, you'd have nothing to fear because they would hold up to scrutiny. Your fear and disdain for academia demonstrates the flimsiness of your beliefs. To make such sweeping statements as 
These days, academics just sit around with their heads up their asses, sniffing their own farts. Is so demented. It's this way of thinking that leads people to reject modern medicine altogether. Like, yes, Big Pharma is corrupt, but don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. He is overly romanticizing academia of the past and overly disparaging academia of the present. Pretentious academics have existed throughout history and will always exist. I agree that the quote he pulled from the article was a little convoluted, but to conclude that everything coming out of academia today is pointless, and that the question of whether milk has ties to white supremacy is stupid, is stupid. The world would be better off without dairy, not only for the cows, but for humans, particularly people of color. Bringing attention to how dairy industry propaganda reinforces white supremacy is incredibly useful because it helps reasonable people who oppose colonialism question why they're consuming this stuff and connect the dots between colonialism and speciesism. Like colonialism, speciesism involves exploitation, domination, and subjugation. And unless you're a fascist, you understand that these things are bad. Hence why dairy is for fascists. I'm kidding, obviously. Cow's milk is for baby cows. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you appreciate my new setup. The same microphone used by Joe Rogan. So it's a good one, okay? I feel like I've been known on YouTube for having absolute shit production quality. That's changing. It's time. It's time. It's time we get a nice microphone, a teleprompter, which helps cut my filming time in half. I have a lot of content coming for you. Uh, I'll be responding to Elise Parker. Yes, yes, we are checking in on Elise Parker and what she is up to. It's going to be a good one. Anyways, stay tuned. All right, peace out.